What's up, everybody? We are back, and today, this episode is all about Mandy and the ladies. So, yes. we're going to get back in a minute and get started, but I just want to say welcome to season two, episode number 61 of the Mastering Marriage Podcast. It's about to go down. Let's go. All right. So welcome back, everybody. My name is David Taylor, and I am here with my lovely wife, Amanda Taylor. How you doing, baby? I'm doing all right. You How sure? You doing, boo? I'm good. I can't complain. You ready for today's episode? I am. I'm really excited. Because uh, everybody that's listening, Mandy's about to take the lead, and I get to play the background today. So um, in a minute, we're going to talk a little bit about what the episode is all about. But before we get started, again, I want to say welcome. Thank you for listening and allowing us to be in your ears, in your headphones or yes. your speakers or whatever you are listening on. Thank you. This is episode 61 of the Mastering Marriage Podcast. Uh, and we first want to give a shout out to all of our patrons, everybody who has decided to support the show by becoming a patron. We want to say thank you. Yes, we, uh, we appreciate, appreciate you. We appreciate it. We really do. So uh, we just want to give you a shout out first of all. And then guess what, y'all? Mandy has a book about to drop. Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's literally, <laughs> we, we literally about to drop it like it's hot. The title of the book is called Beauty in the Brokenness. Yes. And today, today's episode is going to be a little bit of a sneak peek into like just a little bit of what one of the chapters is all about. Um, and so uh, we're going to have Mandy take the lead today and she's going to kind of teach on a topic. Actually, if you have looked at the title of the show, it's Hopeful Romantic, Seven Ways to Be Intentional About the Intimacy in Your Marriage. Yes. And so Mandy's going to go ahead and take the lead on this and and, and y'all, I get to play in the background and and and, and just kind of ad lib and co-sign and just <laughs> chill. This is gonna be fun. So, baby, you ready? Yes. You need I to am. take a little drink of water first for you. Take a little sip, and so she's sipping on water. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, baby. You have the floor. All right. So, hey, hey, fam. Um, as I said, I'm really excited today. I'm glad to finally be teaching again. Um, and I'm excited for the release of my new book. As David said, it's called Beauty in the Brokenness, Healing the Woman Inside the Wife. So that's the entire title. Mm. So the topic I will be discussing today um, is one of the subjects that I cover in my book. So this is kind of like your sneak peek. Yeah, and this book is was like 16 chapters deep. Yeah. I mean, it's juicy. Like, it's really thick. It's so thick. <laughs> just just know that when you get this book, women, because it's for wives, um, yes. you, I mean, you, Mandy is bearing her soul. So, but in it, oh, it by the way, there. at the end of the show, we're going to show, we're going to tell you how you can get your hands on it as a pre-order yes. copy. We got some pre-order bonuses to go along with it. Oh, uh, yes. So You're we'll talk like about those. that in a minute, but yeah, go ahead, Mandy. What, what's going on with this? Okay, so just like David said, today's podcast is strictly for the wives. So husbands, if you are listening, um, just make sure that you share this with your wives, okay? Because I want to make sure that they get their hands on this. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. So ladies, I want you to think about this. As women, our entire lives have been set up to become suckers for love and romance. As young girls, we watch Disney films with beautiful girls being wooed by handsome guys who rescued mm -hmm. them, and they lived happily ever after, right? Mm -hmm. Our little minds thought, ooh, I cannot wait to have that. We also played house with Barbie and Ken dolls pretending to be married. I know that y'all remember that. I had Ninja Turtle dolls. I don't know what you're talking about. You know about. you used to play with Barbie. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> oh. 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 I'm sorry, babe. All so right, what so that mean about you then if you married a man who used to play with Barbie dolls? Oh, I see. But anyway, uh, <laughs> and so ladies, I'm sure that you also remember in our teens, we listened to music and watch music videos, right? Where cute guys were always singing to girls, causing them to faint and making us want a guy who could sing. No, but depending on the generation you came from, you watch shows like maybe Family Matters, 90210, Wonder Years, maybe A Different World or Saved by the Bell. I know me personally, I had a fit over Stefan or Kel, 
who seemed to be the cutest teen boy on the planet at the time. <laughs> um, and he had the looks, the moves, and he was smart. I thought, man, I want that in a boyfriend. And let's just go ahead and fast forward a little bit. So as adults, we started to venture into romantic novels like the Zang books and Terry McMillan books. Mm. We started watching more chick flicks where a man sweeps a woman off her feet in just two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. They get together, something happens, but then love brings them back together and they live happily ever after in passionate love until the end of time. Baby, question, what's your favorite chick flick? Love and Basketball. <laughs> That's my favorite. Oh, okay. I right. can. Just curious. And The Notebook. Those are yeah, I was, I thought running you was, too. I was going to say, I know you like The Notebook. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, just curious. Now, some of those movies would just show a woman being showered with love and affection by a man she could never be with, like in Set It Off. And don't y'all act like y'all don't remember the scene in Set It Off with Jada Pinkett Smith and Blair Underwood. Mm, I don't remember that. Of course I still you don't. don't. I still don't remember that. Well, that proves my point. I know yeah. the ladies out there remember that. Hmm. <laughs> that okay. massage, uh, that massage scene with that oil and them candle lights. Yes, hunty. Okay. All right. <laughs> Stay focused. Oh, that's so funny. Anyway, <laughs> but the visual and the idea of that made us say, "I really, truly want that." Now, whether you identify with the experiences and memories I had, or you have your own, you too have had or still have that same longing and desire for passion and freedom that seems to come with love and marriage. So what happened? You said yes to the ring, you said yes to the dress, and boom, you married the man of your dreams. Or so you thought. Mm. So let's go deeper. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're being honest, in most cases after getting married, you may not have received what you fully expected. Maybe the sex is good, but no real foreplay or attention to detail. Mm. Maybe the foreplay is great, but there is just no regard for your ending pleasure. Hmm. Think about this. Maybe everything in the bedroom is on point, but he isn't thoughtful unless he wants some. Stingy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just, okay, well, think about being this. in the background. Is I, I don't have anything else to do, so I, I hear. Feel helpless. I, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> but also think about these examples, ladies. Maybe he is thoughtful, and the bedroom is booming, but the kissing is off. Maybe everything mm. is great, but sometimes you wish he would take more care of himself and take care of his appearances. And be more intentional like he was when he was pursuing you when you were dating. That's a good point. So let me go here for a minute. I'm just going to keep it real with y'all because y'all know how we do, right? Y'all are our oh, family. Oh, gosh. <laughs> here we go. It's the setup. I already know what's about to happen. So David, <laughs> <laughs> David started out as my Stefan Arkell, right? And then he turned out to actually be my Steve. I still don't get that. Well, don't you get, bro? I don't get the Steve part. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what okay, I mean. All right. Help so me. So at the very beginning Fellas, of our relationship, <laughs> David was very suave and very sexy. But as the relationship progressed, he started to become more goofy and playful Steve, as time moved on. But Steve is not goofy and playful. He's oh. nerdy and weird. But I guess that's your perception. My perception was huh. that he was goofy and playful. Oh, okay. So, I know <laughs> me personally, I was like, what the absolute heck happened? Okay, where did my Stefan go? <laughs> mm. So, just like many of you ladies out there, I felt bamboozled and wasn't sure how to work with what I had. You better work it. I mean, I do, but you know. Oh. Uh, so, let's move on. <laughs> you know that. But, um... <laughs> But here's where it gets interesting. <laughs> I may have been asking where my Stefan went, but get this. On the flip side, David was asking the same questions. And a lot of times we don't think about this when we are focused on what we as wives are lacking. Are lacking. Mm. So apparently I also presented one thing and gave him something different. Mm. 
He often says, and if you've listened to our podcast mm-hmm. for a while, this will sound familiar. David will say, I came for apple pie and I got peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> That's what he'll say. I like that score too. <laughs> You want yeah. me to tell it now? No, I mean, no, no, no. no, you tell it enough. You tell it enough. <laughs> she said, I ain't trying to hear that mess no more. <laughs> but we laugh about it now yeah. uh, because it's a really funny story. But again, you'll have to hear him tell it later on or go back to a past podcast. <clears throat> but the thing is, we all present our best selves when we're dating. But for some reason, once we get married, the people we truly are actually comes to the surface. Who we are when no one is looking slowly creeps to the surface and our spouse starts wondering why we have changed. But the truth is we are just finally becoming our true selves. Mm. Hmm. So I want you to think about that for a minute. Maybe you were able to ignore him smacking his food when you dated and now you hate it with a passion. Mm. Maybe he seemed to enjoy rubbing your feet every night before you got married, but now he sighs when you ask him. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> uh, um, you won't be giggling about that. Well, because, I mean, I know we got a story. Uh-huh. Like, you know, we do, we do. Because it used to be, our thing used to be massages. Yes. And it I is. even bought a massage table, mm-hmm. right? Go on. No, I'm just saying, that's all. Mm-hmm. That's all. I'll we'll put a period there. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. So, the truth is, we settle into marriage. <laughs> We get comfortable and less intentional. So that's the point I'm trying to make. Life happens and we expect each other to understand. They don't show that in the movies or talk about that in the books, though. You see, when Hollywood does show the ills of relationships, two hours doesn't give us a realistic picture of real time, real life experience. Sure don't. So when you have a long day at work, have to deal with the kids, Or when you just feel lonely and want to be held, but he won't give you the attention that you desire in that moment, you realize love and marriage isn't as breezy as you thought it would be. So think about this. The books and movies don't account for the actual day-to-day, month-to-month, and year-to-year transitions of relationship and marriage. They don't take into account personal baggage, family loss, job adjustments, uh, financial struggles, and children that are factored into real-life relationships and marriage. And you know what? Because of this, many of us seem to be confused and disappointed by the quality of romance in our marriages, which then gives way to depression, resentment, bitterness, and and also irritability. Mm, Good point. So, I mean, yes, I mean, and that's why it's, That's why I wrote this book, Beauty and the Brokenness, because things like this can cause us to be broken and feel empty inside. Or it can highlight the brokenness that's already there. Exactly. And make it even worse. Right. And I definitely talk about that also in my book. So, so then we go back to, so once we experience these emotions, once these emotions come up of depression, resentment, bitterness, and irritability, when we're not getting what we want. We go back to watching those same shows and reading those same books for quote unquote entertainment and enjoyment only to confirm the negative feelings of what we don't have in our own marriages. Mm -hmm. And ladies, this is so unfair. It's unfair to your husband and it is unfair to you. So I want you to think about that for a minute. So I say it's unfair to your husband because you are setting him up for failure because he will never be the imaginary man you piece together in your fantasy. You set yourself up because this type of behavior causes you to feel lonely and you begin to isolate yourself. I know this because that happened to me. Mm. You determine I'll just deal with it. Filling your voids in other ways are deadening yourself to that area of your marriage altogether. David, you got any thoughts on that? Um, no, this is this is actually pretty good. I'm taking it all in, by the way. Um, I think it's very true that what happens is if we feel like most people in marriage, they don't what 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 we found is that they don't feel comfortable expressing to the other person what they feel they need from them. Mm-hmm. And as a result, 
they get these deficits or like you call these voids. And then right. those voids become kind of like vacuums that suck in anything and everything that will fit in. Exactly. And that's what kind of led me to the infidelity, right? And it, it leads so many people astray in their marriages. So this is a really good point. Awesome. That is so true, though. So I'm just going to say this. Instead of putting your expectations on your husband and vice versa, it is imperative that you develop your expectations together. Mm. That is the key. Develop your expectations together. You must have been reading my uh, my new book that, I, that I'm writing, but it ain't out yet on no, the laws of marriage. I think you took that from my book. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because that is, that's one of the laws of marriage is, you know, you develop expectations together. So yes. that's good. And by the way, um, you said something earlier that was also one of the laws of marriage, which What's is that, baby? Uh, don't set your spouse up for failure. Mm. Yeah. So this is good. This is I see you. you see, you've I, been dabbling. I see you, and I see you, David. You you trying to drop drop some hints about your new your new book coming out? Ah, too. well, you All know, right. you know, don't be, right. nosy, though. Right. <laughs> don't be nosy, don't be nosy. Just stay out my stuff, and then I won't have to drop it because you, I see you've been dabbling in my notes, ah. and now you got it in your book. Oh, okay, that, that was know, cute. It comes out that way. So. <laughs> but no, this is good. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. All right. So <laughs> let me also say this. You have to work as a team when it comes to learning how to please one another. Mm-hmm. We don't have to live a life of loneliness and disappointment, ladies. Please hear me when I say that. This doesn't have to be a broken area of our lives. If we just talk to each other and learn from one another, mm-hmm. it is so important that we that we really communicate with our husbands about this area. So let's go ahead and, and keep it moving. So this process won't always feel good, so please don't expect it to. If you don't normally talk about intimacy, it will definitely take time to do it. There are going to be moments where he tells you, I don't like that. Or maybe he he may say, don't do it that way. Or maybe even, I don't know what I like. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The same is going to go for you. He may even get frustrated and vice versa. But that's okay. The goal is to grow together and enjoy the journey. Your marriage isn't a movie or a book. You have to remember that. That's good, baby. (laughs) Like, no, if you think about it, because so many times we... We get, like you talked about at the beginning of, you know, the show, you talk, you, we get so connected to the fantasy yeah. of marriage mm-hmm. by what we read or by what we see. Yeah. And then we expect that to be the reality when oh, we yeah. get, you know, we get bamboozled, like you said, when we <laughs> get married and the fantasy doesn't exist. It's a right. mirage. Exactly. Um, that's, wow, that's good. Your marriage is in a movie or a book. I like right. that. I might have to put that but one in one of my this laws. part too. In addition to that, we can't, we have to make sure that we realize we can't fast forward through the parts we don't like. Mm. We have to keep working at things until they fit us and our marriage. Say that part again. That was, that's pretty profound. So we can't fast forward through the parts we don't like in our marriage. You have to keep working at things until they fit you and your man or you and your marriage. So if I hear you correctly, um, and this is me looping, guys. Um, what you're saying is every marriage is going to go through storms and seasons that may not be fruitful. Mm-hmm. And it would be foolish to think that, number one, I can't have these, I won't have these negative seasons. But then number two, when these negative seasons come, they're not supposed to be here. So let's go ahead and skip through them. You're saying that to actually work through them because why? What, they They are supposed to benefit the marriage? Exactly. Hmm. Because when you work through these things, then you learn each other and we're supposed to be students of our spouses at all times. And that's another law of marriage. That's good. Good stuff. (laughs) (laughs) No, but that's so true. That's so true. You learn so much through the tension and the conflict than Mm -hmm. you would if things were going great. Exactly. Good stuff. I've definitely learned that lesson. Mm -hmm. So another thing, um, another thing to consider is, is this point. We all grew up learning about sexual intimacy differently. So we should never expect that our husbands will have the same outlook on intimacy as we do coming into the marriage. So even if it is discussed prior to the marriage, I want you to listen carefully to this. Even if it is discussed prior to the marriage, 
we all define and see hugging, kissing, foreplay, touching, and a host of other things in our own way through our own lenses. And through your own past experiences. Exactly. Yes. Interesting. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Cause I know I'm just going to say this. I've heard a lot of people say, well, all that should be worked out in marriage counseling before you get married, or you should have talked about all these things before you get married. But a lot of times we don't ask our partner, how do you define kissing? What does kissing look like for you? Mm-hmm. What does hugging look like for you? Mm-hmm. What, what do you, when you say foreplay, what does that mean for you? We just assume that the other person, um, that their de- that their definition is the same as our definition. Mm-hmm. So that's something to think about. So instead of getting frustrated, get clarity and understanding so you can please each other. So now, 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 we're finally going to get to these seven ways to be intentional about intimacy in your marriage. So if you, if you haven't been taking notes, this is where you really want to start taking notes. Yes. Thank you, babe. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm here for. I'm in the background. This I'm playing the support right now. I clean off the stage. I make sure you got your water. Appreciate what it. What you need? You I need, got it. I think you got I, everything. I think my brow is wiped and everything. Okay. We good. All right. Well, I'm in the background. So whatever you need, I'm here. Thank you, bub. Mm. What am I about to call you, bub? I don't babe. know. Who you about ba- to... Babe and boo. Oh, okay. Go on, get it. Fix it. <laughs> you call me another brother name live on air. We liable to be moving some furniture. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Well, let's focus. Yeah. So it is our (laughs) desire that you use this information so that intimacy is no longer an area of brokenness and confusion in your life and in your marriage. So here are the seven ways to be intentional about intimacy in your marriage. All right, let's, let's go ahead and dive in. So number one, identify the areas of physical intimacy and romantic struggles in your marriage. So what I want you to do is write down what you're dissatisfied with, and what you struggle with. Stop letting assumptions and hidden struggles weigh you down, ladies. Expose them so you can find healing and work on solutions. Whether it, whether it is directly related to the marriage or something stemming from your past, pushing them aside only drives a wedge further between you and your husband. And it also causes you to be unfulfilled and full of deadly emotions, Mm -hmm. which I also talk about in the book. Yeah. All right. So take some time to do that again. Number one is identify the areas of physical intimacy and romantic struggles in your marriage. If you need to pause to do that, do it. All right. Number two, pray over it. So I know you are probably thinking you want me to pray about it. Yes, I do. (laughs) So God created your desires and he created sex. I know we don't like to talk about God and sex, but guess what? They go together. Mm -hmm. See, God intended for us to enjoy the experience inside our marriages and to enjoy each other. He will reveal to you things that maybe you didn't even consider about your struggles with intimacy and also the expectations you came in the marriage with. He will even give you some insight you can use in step number three, which we'll get to in a minute. So I suggest praying first because God can prepare your heart for what your husband may say. It can also help you get better understanding of your own desires and struggles and put you in a better position to hear your husband objectively without judgment or offense. Mm -hmm. So not only that, But it will show your husband, get this, that you are serious about finding a solution and also leading by example in this area. And that is really important, ladies. I know sometimes, you know, in marriage, people are are constantly waiting on each other to make the first move. But sometimes we have to lead by example. And that is showing power and strength. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go ahead and dive into number three. So again, we're talking about the seven ways to be intentional about intimacy in your marriage. So number three, discuss it with your husband. So now I want you to take all the information you gathered and what you got from God in prayer and ask your husband about his concerns about your sex life 
an intimate physical connection. Ask him if he desires more or less of anything. Reassure him that you are open and you desire his honest feedback. So I want you to make sure that you set a time for you also to share your thoughts and take note of his responses. But I want you to keep in mind steps one, two, and three are all about gathering information. So again, you will have a chance to share what you came up with, but first, this step is about listening to the heart of your man, okay? Number four, pray over it again. Yep, I said pray again. And let's be real. It isn't easy to hear what we may not be doing right or what we may not be doing enough of, especially from our husbands, ladies. God will help you to receive what your husband says with your spirit instead of of with your emotions. Even though you will pray before talking with your husband, take the feedback he gives you and take it to God for further clarity and also pray for him if he struggles with something that is stem that is stemming from his past or past trauma. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah, it's really and, important. Yeah, because and we talk about this, right? That you are uh you have spiritual authority in your husband's exactly, life. Exactly. And so it's very imperative that if he reveals that there are issues from his past mm-hmm. that is uh, kind of debilitating him and in his intimacy or his perception of intimacy, that, you know, it's important to pray about those things. It is so important. For him, in your prayer closet, and then even together if the opportunity presents itself. Right. If he's comfortable with that sort of thing, you know. So true. All right. So let's go to number five. Know your love languages. Nine times out of ten, you and your husband will speak a different love language. Even if your love languages are the same, you may have different interpretations and speak different dialects. An example of this would be, you both may speak the love language of physical touch, for instance. But maybe you enjoy holding hands and cuddling, but your but your husband enjoys sexual penetration the most okay just went straight straight to the gut huh but hey hey <laughs> we, we keep it real you know that <laughs> she said so, sexual penetration hey get it in. <laughs> i would have said coitus i know baby. <laughs> does that tickle you baby yeah just that word is <laughs> coitus i know i'm like a high school boy that's just <laughs> funny when people say coitus that's my steve anyway <laughs> 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 I see. Okay. Yeah, you see that? You Steve saw that? wouldn't. Have, mm-hmm. Okay, maybe yeah, we'll yeah, see. He would've, he would've. Okay. okay. <laughs> so knowing these specific details about <laughs> each other will help you to be more intentional with your husband. Number six: research resources that will help. Actually, you know what? Can we go back real fast? Because, like, because you brought up an interesting point with number five. You okay. said know your love language. And there's a book out by Gary Chapman called The Five Love Languages. Mm -hmm. If you have never read the book, make sure to read that book. All you have to do is go to Amazon. You can download it, a couple dollars, literally, and you will have it. You can also get the book for kids and for teens and for singles, right? It's imperative for pets. (laughs) (laughs) But actually, you know, pets have love languages too, it's what we found with ours. Um, but no, that's a good point that I, I, I just didn't want to let that point go before saying that there is a resource called the five love languages. Mm-hmm. And inside the book, there's a quiz. There's an actual quiz you can take right. to where you can find what your love language is. Exactly. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up real quick. Thank fast. you, babe. So number that's six. Good. No, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Number six, research resources that will help. Of course, the five love languages is one resource that will be very helpful if you haven't read that. Mm-hmm. If we want true freedom and satisfaction in our marriage, you have to put off shame and pride and be willing to get help if you need it. Mm -hmm. Finding a safe third party or maybe a program to complete together will help you and your husband heal and grow together. You only stay stuck if you refuse to let someone else pull you up. Mm -hmm. So remember that. Good point. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. Lastly, we're going to jump to number seven. Again, if you forgot, we're going over the seven ways to be intentional about intimacy in your marriage. All right. Number seven, 
Write your love story. Develop an intimacy intentionality plan. Wow, that's kind of, that's a mouthful. In- intimacy intentionality plan. Yeah, say that seven times. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds interesting. So your love story might include play fighting and then sex or role playing. Maybe your particular love story may be simple gestures throughout the day of hand holding and thoughtful actions that lead to a pre-planned night of love making. Maybe your story might have quickies and long nights of passion all mixed in. It might not include a lot of sex in this season because of physical ailments or difficulties, but full of touches, kisses, and warm hugs. But guess what? It doesn't matter. It is your story with your man. So make the best of it, ladies. Stop dreaming of a prince charming from a far away land and embrace the king you committed your life to right in front of you. Mm. Okay, so I'm done. <laughs> but you know what? Before I end, I'm, I want to go back through the seven steps. Mm. Again, um, we had seven steps of being intentional about intimacy in your marriage. And number one, was identify the areas of physical intimacy and romantic struggles in your marriage. Number two was pray over it. Number three was discuss it with your husband. Number four was pray over it again. Number five was know your love languages. Number six was research resources that will help. And number seven was write your love story, develop an intimacy intentionality plan. Can I um add like a half of one? Sure. Because um I know you're speaking to women mm-hmm. about men. Mm-hmm. And so this is an area that men, when it comes to sex and intimacy, mm-hmm. most men aren't going to be open or comfortable talking about what they can't do. Okay. Because for men, men, it like, for most men, they are brought up to believe that in order to be masculine, I have to be sexual. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. to be a man means I have to be able to please my woman, my wife with my penis. Mm -hmm. And so if there's something wrong with my ability to please her, then that's something wrong with my masculinity. And so just understand that if and when you bring this up, that's why Mandy has prayer in there twice, Mm -hmm. because if and when you bring this topic up to him, Mm -hmm he may not be open or receptive to it at first. He may be defensive. Don't take that as a negative sign. Mm -hmm. That's your man being a man, okay? Mm -hmm. If he has a low emotional IQ, he may struggle to be receptive to this at first. Mm -hmm. So pray, understand that, you know, you're going to have some opposition when bringing this up to him and talking about it, especially when it comes to developing that intimacy intentionality plan. Like, he may not be as... um, as gung ho about it as you initially. Mm -hmm. So just understand that it's going to, you may be met with opposition as part of the process. Don't get offended or defensive or afraid of it. Mm -hmm. Expect it so that you know how to leverage it. Thank you. That was, that That was was really good. No, that's good because we do have husbands listening to this podcast as well. Um, and so not only that, but again, wise, we don't want to set ourselves up for failure either. And, it goes back to what I talked about earlier about expectations. Mm. So even with something like this, you don't want to, you know, go to your husband with your own expectations. Yes. Yes. That's so key. So expect the expect, like understand him, right? One of the laws of marriage is be a student of your spouse. Mm -hmm. So if you've been married for any period of time, you should know certain things, certain traits, characteristic traits about your husband. Right. So just understand that he will be who he is Mm. in this conversation. So don't expect him to be what you want him to be initially. Right. So good stuff. Awesome. Okay. So we're really done now. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So uh, you know what, Mandy, I want you to do something real fast then. So, so you went over those seven, those seven steps. Um, you gave a lot of information and this is literally like we talked about at the beginning of the podcast, just like a little spoonful of your book, 16 chapters of you. So why don't you kind of, uh, take some time to talk about your brand new book, beauty in the brokenness. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit, like, tell us who this book is for Mm -hmm. and yeah, just tell us who it's for. Let's start there. Okay. So beauty in the brokenness. Um, Again, the subtitle is Healing the Woman Inside the Wife. So this book is for, of course, wives. 
And it's about us actually finding the woman that is inside of us that maybe is buried behind the title of Mrs. Mm. A lot of times we come into our marriages and we get lost in the role. We get so consumed with being a wife and with being a good wife. And in some regards, some of us want to be perfect wives to where we don't even recognize ourselves anymore. I'm sure many of you can relate when somebody asks you maybe what you like um, instead of what you and your husband likes, you know, to do or to eat. A lot of your things are probably the same as your husband <laughs> because you've gotten so used to kind of assimilating with him. But you kind of forgot the things that you really enjoy and the things that you're passionate about. Um, and so that's what this book is about. It's about finding yourself again. But Beauty in the Brokenness, um, I, I'm actually going to be covering a lot of topics that honestly you won't see really brought to the forefront about issues that wives deal with mm -hmm. under the surface. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we bring brokenness into the marriage and we may not even recognize it yeah. because a lot of things when you get married come to the surface and we don't even know that it's there. So like what's an area that you can you can share with them that you're going to talk about that most people probably, number one, wouldn't hear you talk about as much, but also most women, most wives probably won't even talk about. Mm -hmm. What's one of those topics you're going to cover in the book? So one of the topics that I'll talk about is, um, is destructive behaviors, mm. destructive behaviors and addictions. Oh, okay. Yes. Interesting. Um, and so I like just, the chapter on, uh, on the, the zaddy daddy that that like that. Yes. One. I have a chapter in my book called daddy diaries. That's really interesting as well. Ah. And so whether your father was in your life or not, that chapter is going to be very impactful to help you really gain some new perspective on why you have certain expectations of your husband. Mm. And now there's also a chapter where you talk about, uh, sexual molestation. Yes, there is a chapter I know, where that I talk a, about abuse and sexual <clears throat> molestation. And that was I a heavy about, chapter. Yes, it was heavy um, because I personally went through that myself um, as a young girl. And, of course, the experience that I had really perverted and impacted my ability to connect with, with men and with my husband inside of my marriage physically and, and, and sexually. And what it, one of the things I took away from that chapter is that Things that happened to you as a young girl, right? Age, what was the low, the the youngest you were? I can't remember, but however you old you were, and then you kind of matured through those those inappropriate sexual uh, events. Mm -hmm. It affected how you saw intimacy, right? And so, imagine guys like you thinking of just this chapter that you know this concept, this concept of you know being intimate inside of your marriage. But if you if you've gone through sexual wounding as a young girl it perverts and distorts how you see intimacy in your marriage mm -hmm. and imagine if you never deal with that area of brokenness and right. and i know mandy uh, if i can toot your horn a little bit one of the things you go deep into in this book is walking a woman through getting that healing yes and helping them to understand that just because they're broken doesn't mean they're not beautiful exactly. and that often your brokenness is the very thing that makes you beautiful it's exactly. deep man i mean i i Thank you. I, I mean, I like the book, and Thank I know you. it's for wives. <laughs> and so, and I got a lot out of it, and I know it's for wives. There was one that you talked about. Um, there was it was a bonus chapter. You talked about uh, angel baby, angel babies. Yeah, that I was that was chapter. rough. Yes. that was rough to read. Yeah, because yeah, and and so if and this is this chapter. Now I, I I'm not gonna give it all all away, but I, <laughs> I just got to do this. You know, this chapter is a bonus chapter because it may not relate to everybody, but it's about. Um, those who have had a miscarriage or have lost a child. Yes, who um, struggle with infertility. Yeah, or who, who struggle with infertility. Because, which you, I mean, honestly, that is right now our story. Yeah, you which know, you know, that's what we've been struggling with. Yeah, yes. yeah. And we lost a baby two years and a, a month or so, two years and a month mm -hmm. or so to the date. So, I mean, yeah. it's, so this was, this is good. This So what I'm really saying um, about the book is that like, if you're a woman and you're a wife and you're listening to this, go out and get the book. Like, yeah. and I'm not saying it because I want you to buy it. I'm saying it because I want you to get the connection between the brokenness and the beauty that is you, mm -hmm. you know, you are a broken masterpiece, but right. you're still a masterpiece exactly. and you are the apple of God's eye. And, and Mandy has a way in this book of 
helping you to see that. And um, I know the book, I had to read it. I had to edit it before we sent it to the, the real editor. <laughs> Shout out to the real ed- editor, Charlene. <laughs> um, but like, I know that this book is packed full of not just stories and uh, strategies and resources, but uh, of, of activities, right? You right. you have this book set. Full. Yeah, Ooh, so you got wow. you can actually go through and actually do activities. And I mean, it's just so much to do. It so. is. And I just wanted to say this before we wrap up. I know some of the examples we gave seem to be very uh, concrete examples of trauma. But I just want to say, even to the women who have never been molested, never had addictions, never, you know, lost children, I still have several other chapters um, that will relate to you. And even in the chapters that we talked about, Mm -hmm. I talk about how different mindsets and different behaviors and habits affect who you are and affect your ability to function in a, you know, function as, as a healthy and whole woman. Yeah. Yeah, this is, I'm telling you, if you enjoyed Motivated to Love, you will enjoy Beauty and the Brokenness. And by the way, when you look at the book cover, get, I'm telling you, you're going to fall in love with the book just based off of the cover. <laughs> it, it is beautiful, right? It, it really is. It's very artistic. It's very beautiful. Um, so you're going to like it. And I know you're wondering, okay, y'all didn't talk about this daggone book enough. How can I get my hands on it? So <laughs> here's what we've done today, right? May the 19th, 2017. Today opens the door for pre-order week. So we have an entire week where you can pre-order the book. And when you pre-order the book, you have access to three exclusive pre-order bonuses. So we've done something a little different because usually we'll just have pre-orders so that people can get their copies early. Mm -hmm. But now we want to give you something for pre-ordering the book. And so you'll either be able to get the ebook with the audio book attached to it or the paperback version. When you do the pre-order and you can, you'll get three exclusive pre-order bonuses. They're off the hook. Mandy was very creative with this one, you know, so I I, want to tell y'all what it is, but I'd rather you go to the website and look at it. So here's the website. Here's what you can do. Um, Go to this website, www.beaut. Uh Oh, I already got it messed Uh up. Let's try this again. (laughs) I'm hyped. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know. I'm hyped for you, and maybe I, I need to calm down a little bit. But I'm really excited about this I'm book because you put a lot of work into it. But anyway, yeah, let me yeah. tell people the website: <laughs> www.brokenthenumber2beauty.com. That's b r o k e n the number two b e a u t y dot com. Broken to beauty.com and that's where you can go look at the book learn more about it watch the book trailer uh that mandy you know is starring on and look at the uh the pre-order um bonuses that you'll be to get and it opens may the 19th today all the way up to next friday may the 26th so you have an entire week to pre-order the book those who who pre-order the um the paperback copy will get it much much sooner than those who would do it regularly it takes only two weeks to get it anyway, but you'll get it in a, in a less amount of time. Um, but go to the website, broken, the number two beauty.com to check out the book. Mandy, are there any other closing remarks before we wrap this show up? Again, uh, I first just want to say thank you, David, for all your support with, um, the production of this book. I really appreciate um, everything that you've done as well. Um, all your background work. Um, and like I said, I just want to speak, again, to the wives that are listening to this. And I just want to, again, encourage you to get this book. And again, don't think that, oh, I have it all together and I just don't have, and you know, th- this probably won't be something for me. You, I want you to think of this as, you know, kind of like a club for women, right? It's kind of like our, our secret club where, you know, we get together and you have, you have me, you have someone who, who you can talk to, who, who you can relate to, Mm -hmm. who knows that we all have things inside of our hearts that are broken. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you don't have to hide it anymore. You have someone now who is actually going to be your voice and, you know, it's going to bring up some things that are going to, that are going to help you to get healing in those areas of brokenness Mm -hmm. so that you can really see your true beauty. Good. Good, good, good. Well, 
I can't wait to hear what other people say about this book. I'm very either. proud of I'm you, excited. baby. Thank um, you. I appreciate the hard work you put in. Everybody that's listening, check it out. Broken to beauty.com. That's broken. The number two beauty.com. And guess what guys, we want to hear what your thoughts are about this. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and wrap up here. Um, this is the very first podcast episode that we've done with the dogs in the studio with us. So you may hear them <laughs> snoring or breathing or walking around, but you know what? It's like when we do our Facebook lives, I mean, you know us, real we're time. here, this is real time, but anyway, guys, we appreciate your time. Patrons, we appreciate your support. Thank um, you. Go ahead and subscribe in iTunes and leave an honest rating and review if you haven't done so already. That way, every new episode that comes out, you'll get it. You don't have to worry about us emailing you or seeing it on Facebook. You'll download to your phone automatically. Mm -hmm. um, the more people that have access to our show, um, the more likely they are to use these resources to help their marriage. In any case, guys, we appreciate your time. We love Thanks you guys. For joining us. And guess what? We out, y'all. Deuce, deuce, baby. Thank you.